In 1968, Hong Kong was a magnificent era, and Hui Yaowen, who had just applied to be a philosophy teacher at the University of Hong Kong, embarked on a different path in life, with joy, sorrow, and naturally ambitious aspirations. Keywords of the Novel Hong Kong 1968 No Pop-Up, Hong Kong 1968 Complete Collection Download, Hong Kong 1968 Latest Chapter Reading Chapter 1 001 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 1001, Hong Kong 1968 In 1968, the office of the Director of the Faculty of Arts at the University of Hong Kong this office is not very big, only about a hundred feet long. In addition to a desk, three chairs, and a small bookshelf, there is also a small coffee table specifically designed for storing fans and thermos bottles. At this moment, the fan is blowing a cool breeze, bringing a rare coolness in the scorching summer. However, at first glance, it can be seen that some years ago, the fan's wind force was still too small. The room was small and stuffy, and there were no windows, so it had no effect on relieving the heat. The two sitting inside were already sweating profusely. Director Huang, thank you very much for your help this time. If it weren't for you, my decision to stay on campus and become a teacher would have gone through many twists and turns. Hui Yaowen said as he took out a box of the most expensive Marlboro brand cigarettes on the market from his pocket. He didn't take it out rashly, but opened the box and handed it to Director Huang behind the table. With a smile on his face, he said, Director Huang, please take a cigarette first. Director Huang rudely took out a cigarette from the cigarette box. As soon as he put it to his mouth, he heard a click sound. Sparks flickered from the tip of the match in front of him, but he didn't refuse. He leaned forward slightly and leaned in front of the match. He took a few puffs and lit the cigarette, then straightened his body and looked at Hui Yaowen, saying. Yao Wen, as for me, I have watched you gradually become a successful student from school and I am aware of your abilities. This time, being able to stay on campus as a non-staff teacher is also due to your own hard work and diligence. Teacher Zhang is getting older and has also submitted a retirement report. After taking care of this last batch of students in the first half of next year, he will retire and go home to take care of the children. And you are Teacher Zhang's favorite student. He also told the principal that you are the most suitable student to stay on campus, so if you want to thank Teacher Zhang, you should thank him well speaking of which, Director Huang took a deep breath of the cigarette in his hand and glanced at the box of Marlboro brand cigarettes that Hui Yaowen had deliberately placed on the table, which he had hardly eaten before. He smiled and said, don't say, good cigarettes are good cigarettes, and they don't taste at all. Hui Yaowen understood in his heart and said calmly, if Director Huang likes it, I will definitely show filial piety to you next time I come, and repay you for all the years of cultivation you have given me. Goodbye, the atmosphere in Hong Kong has been bad lately. Director Huang felt a headache when he thought about the recent news published in the newspaper. Originally, the job of staying on campus as a non-staff teacher was not for Hui Yaowen, but now the whole Hong Kong is discussing the topic of anti-corruption, and the University of Hong Kong is no exception. The principal recently repeatedly and sternly refused any corrupt behavior, otherwise the good position of lecturer in philosophy at the Faculty of Arts of the University of Hong Kong would not have been able to secure the position of Hui Yaowen, who has no money, power, or background. Upon hearing this, Hui Yaowen smiled and remained silent. He naturally knew that his ability to become a non-staff teacher in the philosophy department of the University of Hong Kong was not due to the credit of Director Huang in front of him, but rather to the recent anti-corruption craze in Hong Kong and the support of Professor Zhang. However, Director Huang, as his future direct department leader, still had to do what he needed to do. Hui Yaowen is well aware of this in both his past and present life. Since it cannot be eradicated, it is better to join them instead. The two of them briefly exchanged a few more words, Director Huang spoke seriously and said with a friendly expression, All right, you prepare the materials and some class content. School will start in another month. 
you should seize this opportunity and not let Teacher Zhang and our superiors down. Hui Yaowen lifted the golden-rimmed glasses that slipped to the tip of his nose and said with a smile, this is nature. Director Huang, don't worry, I will definitely prepare my lesson well. Director Huang saw this and was about to wave his hand to let Hui Yaowen leave when he suddenly thought of something and said, in terms of salary, Teacher Zhang should have told you before. I've already said it, Hui Yaowen nodded. Director Huang chuckled and said, the 400 mosquito money is indeed a bit less, but now that you are a substitute teacher, the school still needs to see how good your teaching ability is. When you become a full dot time teacher in the future, your salary will definitely be the same as everyone else. Hui Yaowen pursed his slightly dry lips and smiled, I know that. All right, Yaowen. You should go back and prepare first. In the past two weeks, you should work hard and learn more from teacher Zhang. He has been working in school for more than 20 years and has a lot of experience in teaching. You should study hard. I will definitely learn from the teacher about my teaching experience. Since that's the case, I won't disturb Director Huang anymore. After I go back, I will prepare my lessons well. Well, remember to come to the school the day after tomorrow and arrange for you in the teacher dormitory building. Okay Director Huang. In a few minutes, at the entrance of the University of Hong Kong, a young man with an Elvis Presley hairstyle and bell-bottomed pants squatted on the road opposite the entrance of the University of Hong Kong, nibbling on low-dot quality cigarettes while watching the scattered young female students passing by from time to time. Suddenly, he noticed a man wearing a white shirt and trousers walking out of the school gate. Elvis Presley stood up excitedly, waving his right hand and shouting, Brother Yao Wen. Upon hearing the shout, Hui Yaowen stepped forward and curled his mouth, saying, I'll explain why you're shouting so loudly, Mingzi. I'm afraid I'm deaf and can't hear you. Hee <laughs> hee. Ming Zai wiped his long curled hair with his right hand and chuckled foolishly, isn't that because you're afraid Yao Wen can't hear me? What's going on? I've already agreed to it. Hui Yaowen nodded with a smile and said, well, I've agreed to come and teach next month when the school starts. Ming Zai was as happy as if he had successfully applied for the job, and shouted loudly, that's great. Aunt Lee would probably be overjoyed if she heard this news, a teacher at the University of Hong Kong. What a great job. How respectable it is to say it out loud. Hui Yaowen took out a Marlboro brand cigarette from his suit pocket, took out a stick and skillfully lit it in his mouth. He took a deep breath and let the smoke wander in his lungs before slowly taking out a puff of thick smoke. After listening to Ming Zai's words, he curled his lips and said, it's only 400 mosquito money a month, not even the grandma selling bull wings on the street. What's so happy about it? Ming Zai hurriedly said, that's different. How can I compare selling bull-shaped wings to being a teacher at the University of Hong Kong? Even if I don't have a penny, I'm so happy. If you don't pay for a mosquito, then go ahead and do it. Hui Yaowen glanced at Mingzi. This guy knows almost nothing except for reading at a primary and secondary school, and has been fooling around outside as a flying boy. If it weren't for having a plainclothes police officer who can earn money at the police station, he might have starved to death on the streets long ago. If I were to become a teacher, my father would have to be extremely happy. Listening to Mingzi's incoherent words, Hui Yaowen shook his head helplessly, afraid that he would say something else. He quickly said, All right, stop talking. Have you finished what I asked you to do? Ming Zai patted his chest and said, Don't worry, Brother Yaowen. There is nothing that Ming Zai can't do. I have entrusted someone to collect all the newspaper and newspaper information in Hong Kong, and they have all left it at your home. You can see it when you go back. Okay, let's go home. Hui Yaowen couldn't wait to hear this and wanted to go home. Ming Zai suddenly stopped, wait for brother Yaowen. What's wrong? Hui Yaowen turned around to look. Well, brother Yaowen, can you give me a Marlboro to eat? Ming Zai touched the back of his head and smiled a bit embarrassed. Fool. 
Hui Yawen burst out laughing and took out cigarettes and matches from his pocket, throwing them to the other party. I don't need so many Yawen brothers, I just need to eat one. I have also eaten this cigarette and stole it from my old bean. He has good cigarette food every day in the police station, but he envies me so much. Give it all to you, anyway I won't eat anymore. Not eating anymore. Brother Yao Wen, do you want to quit smoking? Why do you really want to quit smoking? In order to live a few more years. Hui Yao Wen smiled, then disregarded Ming Zai's regretful gaze, threw away the cigarette in his hand that had only been eaten once, took a deep breath of the air mixed with the scorching summer atmosphere, looked at the blue sky and the dazzling sun, felt the vitality of his young body, and felt an unprecedented sense of pleasure in his heart. He, who had been smoking for over twenty years in his previous life, often coughed and felt uncomfortable night and night in middle age. He had originally planned not to smoke, but by then he could no longer quit. Now God has given us a new opportunity to come to Hong Kong in this great era of 1968. With this young, handsome, and energetic body, how can we repeat the mistakes of the past? P.S. The first few chapters have some plain language, but not the rest. End of this chapter. Chapter 2 002 Tsiyun Mountain Estate You are listening at NovelFull.audio This translator is experiencing an error, please try another translator. 3 Chapter 3003 Small People and Big Ghosts You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3003 Little People, Big Ghosts, Awen is Back Brother Yao Wen, I have a question that I don't know. Can you teach me? Yao Wen, how's the school situation going? Alvin, listen to your dad, did you apply for a position as a teacher at the University of Hong Kong today? From stepping into the hallway to walking up, Hui Yao Wen had a magnificent journey. Anyone who saw him would instinctively greet him, asking for warmth and concern. This made future generations, apart from exchanging and arguing about water leakage issues, Hui Yao Wen, who basically wouldn't chat with neighbors, feel a hint of what it means to be closer than a distant relative. Hui Yao Wen politely responded to the warm greetings and greetings from the grandparents, aunts, uncles, and younger siblings who were cooking in the hallway, occasionally stopping to exchange ideas. When he arrived at the seventh floor of the public housing, Ming Zai said, Brother Yao Wan, I'm going home for dinner. Well, could you please help me go today? Hui Yao Wan patted Ming Zi's shoulder. He couldn't make it in time this morning, not only to get a haircut, but also to go to the glasses store to get a custom dot made pair of glasses with no degree, so he had to rely on this Xiaoming classmate who has been following behind since childhood. Ming Zai said foolishly, That's Yao Wan Gu. I've never been to a university since I've grown up so much. Not to mention the University of Hong Kong. Although I haven't entered, I can still see the university gate. Hui Yao Wen waved his hand and said, hurry up and go back. I'm also going home for dinner. Then I'll leave, Brother Yao Wen. Ming Zai waved his hand and turned to walk towards the innermost part of the seventh floor corridor. Watching Ming Zai leave, Hui Yao Wen also walked directly upstairs. Hui Yao Wen's family lives on the eighth floor of public housing number eight, and they are neighbors of Ming Zai upstairs and downstairs. As they both come from the same area, the relationship between the two families is relatively close. In addition, Hui Yao Wen can be said to be the only high achieving student in TSC Wan Shan Estate to be admitted to the University of Hong Kong. Chen Da Biao, the plainclothes old man of Ming Tsai, also hopes that his son will learn well after Hui Yao Wen. Hong Kong's public housing is very distinctive and distinctive, especially the first batch of public housing built in the late 1950s, which were basically U-dot-shaped. This type of residential building has two advantages, the first thing is that it can accommodate more people, and the second thing is that the difficulty of building this type of apartment is not very high, and the progress is also very fast. This is also why U-dot-shaped buildings are particularly suitable for low-dot-cost public housing built with government assistance. A single floor can basically accommodate at least 20 households, 
with each household having an actual area of less than 250 feet, which is about 25 square meters. Don't think that 25 square meters is just a lot. In future generations, it will only be the area of one room. In public housing, the whole family lives together. For families with a large population, they usually have to lay on the floor or simply do not have a living room, where food and accommodation are left open. Hui Yaowen has five members in his family, including Lao Do Lao Mu, a Mu, grandmother, and Shi Mei. My parents used to live in the same room, and my mom and sister used to live in the same room. As for Hui Yaowen, since entering primary and secondary school, he has been living on the living room floor. After passing the entrance exam to the University of Hong Kong, he has been living in the school, while my sister also goes to the diocesan girls' college and lives in the school. She usually goes home to stay on weekends. Well, the school is on vacation, and my younger sister has also gone home to live. So Hui Yaowen has been sleeping on the floor in the living room for more than a month since he was born again. If he had slept on the floor like this in his previous life, he would have felt uncomfortable the next day. But now it's different. With a youthful and energetic body, as well as the golden fingers brought by rebirth, and the severe myopia of over 500 degrees, this body is completely gone. Its body is even better. On the eighth floor of the public housing, Hui Yaowen saw his mother and grandmother stir fry vegetables on the small stove set up at the doorstep at first glance. He walked over with a smile and said, Mother. The sudden shout startled Hua's mother, Li Yipping. Seeing that she was her most precious cub, she patted her chest and gave a pale, angry look, saying, You startle me, you child. You walk silently. Hui Yaowen smiled and said, Auntie, you can hear the sound of me walking while frying vegetables. Yaowen is back. Grandma next to her brought over a washed plate of vegetables and looked at Hui Yaowen, who was becoming increasingly tall and refined. With a joyful expression on her face, she said, Yaowen, how are things at school? Hui Yaowen nodded and said, Well, I've applied for the job. I'll be taking care of the new students when the school starts next month. Ha <laughs> ha. Upon hearing that her son had successfully applied for a position as a teacher at the University of Hong Kong, was mother, Li Yiping, couldn't help but smile and said, I just said that I can definitely do it. Isn't it just a University of Hong Kong? I think even going to the Chinese University of Hong Kong is not a problem. Upon hearing about the Chinese University of Hong Kong, Hui Yaowen frowned. In fact, when he was reborn, after organizing his original memories, he also thought about whether he could apply to a better school. But considering the abilities of the original owner and the knowledge they have acquired, they still gave up applying to Chinese University. This time, Hui Yaowen was able to apply for the position of a philosophy lecturer at the Faculty of Arts of the University of Hong Kong. In addition to his own efforts and solid knowledge in school, it was also thanks to the recommendation of the previous teacher, Zhang. At this time, the philosophy course at the University of Hong Kong was not divided into a separate department, but rather as an elective course, attached to the literature department, which can be considered optional courses. After all, philosophy, to put it nicely, tells the story of human cognition and perception of the world, while creating an optimistic spiritual world, the unpleasant point of speaking is that it is an ordinary person's fantasy without much practical significance. But it is reasonable for philosophy to have its meaning, and after receiving the original memory, Hui Yaowen became more interested in philosophy. Especially in the case of Hui Yaowen's rebirth, philosophy may have added some unusual meanings. Yaowen is so good, much stronger than your grandfather. Auntie was also very happy. With a university teacher at home, not only could you envy your neighbors, but your family's situation would definitely be much better in the future. Faced with grandma's praise, Hui Yaowen grinned and glanced at the situation in the nearby room. Seeing only his younger sister sitting at the small dining table in the living room, he couldn't help but ask curiously, where's the old bean? Your father hasn't come back yet. He didn't even come home early for such a big joyous occasion. When she mentioned Hua's father, Li Yiping was furious. 
she said before leaving in the morning, I want to go home early at noon. This son has already come back, but unfortunately, he hasn't come back yet. Well, auntie, old Doe may be busy. School is about to start soon, and the business in the bookstore must be very busy. In order to divert Hua's view, Hua Yao Wen went to the pot to take a look at the braised pork belly inside, and said. Auntie, the meat is going to be burnt. Ouch. Li Yiping immediately lowered her head to stir-fry the braised pork belly in the pan. Yao Wen, please take a break in the house. It's hot today, and I see you're soaked all over. Auntie held Hua Yao Wen's hand and urged him to come in and blow a fan. At this moment, it's time for dinner, and the neighbors along the way are all cooking and cooking. The fragrance is fragrant, but when they get together to stir-fry, the temperature will inevitably rise. Okay, then I'll go to grandma first. Hui Yaowen nodded, turned around, and walked into the room. Upon hearing the commotion, Xiao Mei Hua Tingting quickly turned her head and saw that it was Hui Yaowen. She immediately threw herself onto the dining table, trying to cover something up and turned around with a smirk, saying, Brother, you're back. Hui Yaowen didn't even look at what Shi Mei was covering up, so he instinctively asked, Are you drawing a doll book again? He he, yes ah go, isn't it a holiday now? Even if you're idle, draw some comic books to play with. Little sister Hua Tingting patted the back of her head and said. Hua Yaowen didn't pay attention to his sister's drawing of the comic book. He took off his wet shirt from behind and wiped the sweat on his forehead in front of him. Just as he was about to throw the shirt into the basket, he saw his sister blushing and looking at him shyly. Before Hua Yaowen could speak, Hua Tingting shyly said, Brother, I have grown up. Damn girl. I don't know what's on my mind all day long. I want you to read less books by Yi Shu and Xiong Yao, but I don't listen. Hua Yaowen walked over with a smile and nodded at Shi Mei's forehead. Hua Tingting immediately covered her forehead with both hands and blinked her big eyes, feeling very aggrieved. It hurt so much. With his hands covering his forehead, the painting that was originally covered on the table was exposed. Hui Yaowen noticed that it looked like a man reached out his hand, wondering, what was it painted? Show me. Humph, I don't want to show it to you. Hua Tingting slammed her hands onto the table, not only covering the painting, but also causing several glass teacups on the small dining table to clang. Seeing that Hua Tingting didn't show it to him, Hua Yaowen chuckled lightly and didn't force himself to read what the comic was. He had lived for two lifetimes and was no longer a child. How could he have so much curiosity? Glancing back at the small living room, he asked, By the way, Ting Ting, where did all the newspapers that Ming's I sent go? Hua Ting Ting pouted and pointed to the position of the fan, saying, Mother is all placed under the fan. End of this chapter. 4. Chapter 4004, Money. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 4004, Money, Hua Yao Wen looked in the direction pointed by his younger sister and saw a thick layer of newspaper stacked under an old dot-fashioned fan. He didn't rush to flip through it, but walked to his parents' room and took out a set of changed clothes from a large square wardrobe. It was really hot that day, and coupled with running outside all morning, I not only sweated a lot but also felt sticky. So I decided to take a set of clothes and a stainless steel basin to the public restroom on the floor to take a shower. When he first came back to life, he had to go to the public restroom on the floor to take a shower. Hui Yaowen felt a lot of pain in his heart, after all, taking a shower in the public restroom only caused a pungent odor inside. The most annoying thing was that people would occasionally come in and use the restroom. Although there is a piece of cloth specifically used to separate bathing and going to the bathroom, the distance between the two is too close, which inevitably leads to embarrassment and nausea. One night while Hui Yaowen was taking a shower, someone came to the restroom and listened to the person's hm hm ah ha excretion, almost making Hui Yaowen sick to death. So Hui Yaowen made up his mind to change houses as soon as he received the money. There are too many inconveniences living in public housing. 
Not only do we have to queue up to go to the bathroom and take a shower, but sometimes we even have to queue up to cook. After all, there are only a few public vegetable washing pools, and if we all rush to the same place, it will definitely waste a lot of time. Just as I was thinking about taking a shower, I walked into the public restroom and found that there were already three people washing inside. A few men inside who were taking a shower heard the commotion and turned their heads to look over. Among them, Uncle Kwan, who lived next door to Hui Yaowen, opened his mouth and laughed, Yaowen, come and take a shower too. Hmm. Hui Yaowen's scalp was tingling, and when this meal was ordered, everyone was rushing to take a shower. Uncle Kwan warmly said, then Yaowen, come and squeeze with us to wash. Forget Uncle Kwan, you guys should wash first. Hui Yaowen suddenly lost interest. This public toilet is not very big, except for three squatting pits, there is only about 50 feet, 10 feet equals 1 square meter, of space for people to take a shower, with only two faucets. It was already crowded for three people to wash, and one of them stood directly on the squatting pit. How should Hui Yaowen wash this? No, Hui Yaowen had to go back with his clothes and basin, thinking to himself that he would wait until he finished his meal before washing. Coincidentally, on this hot day, eating can also make him sweat easily. He took a shower and took a nap. In the afternoon, he got up and screened the newspapers one by one. Upon arriving at her doorstep, Li Yipping, who was cooking, was surprised to see her son return so quickly and said, why didn't he take a shower? There are too many people, Uncle Kwan and the others are taking a shower, Hui Yaowen said helplessly. Reborn, there are always too many inconveniences. I thought it would be troublesome without a computer, but now it seems that even taking a shower is very troublesome. Fortunately, it was summer when I came over. If I wanted to take a shower in winter, I would have to freeze to death. However, the winter in Hong Kong doesn't seem to be very cold. Living in public housing is like this, can't bear it anymore. Although Li Yiping has been living in public housing for almost 10 years and is familiar with the environment here, she still hopes that her child can live a more comfortable life, I couldn't help but comfort myself and say, your old bean has already applied for the residential rights of the next batch of new public housing. I went with your old bean to see that not only are each house at least 500 feet long, but there are also independent bathrooms, kitchens, and living rooms. The bedroom is a bit smaller, but it's also much better than now. New Public Housing Hui Yaowen was momentarily taken aback, and then found relevant information in his memory. It turned out that after graduating this year, he no longer needed to pay tuition fees, and his family's finances had become prosperous every month. Hua's father, mother, and grandmother discussed and decided to apply for residential rights in the newly built Xi'an estate, paying an additional 200 yuan per month to live in a brand new public housing. In fact, the conditions of Hua Yaowen's family are not as bad as imagined. After all, Hua's father runs a success bookstore and has cooperated with several high schools, so there must be some profits. He also has a lot of money, but he has two children studying at home. Especially since Hui Yaowen went to college, his expenses have increased significantly, so he has not changed to a new house. Hui Yaowen recalled these things and felt heartbroken for a moment. As expected, it was only his parents who suffered. He couldn't help but pat his chest and said, Mother, I don't really need public housing. This year, I will buy a thousand-foot mansion, and our whole family will move in together. Upon hearing this, was mother, Li Yipping, covered her mouth and smiled happily, saying, Okay, then my mother will expect me to buy a thousand-foot mansion. Seeing Hua's mother like this, one can tell that she is a bit skeptical and thinks she is blowing water. Hua Yaowen can only sigh helplessly in his heart. If it weren't for this month of rebirth, he would have been sorting out the memories of the original owner at first. Later, he would have been busy applying for a position as a teacher at the University of Hong Kong for the dreams of the original owner and his parents. He would have found a way to save money and wouldn't have waited for a month. A few minutes later, Hua Chen Kai, the father of Hua, hurriedly returned from outside. 
Upon hearing that his son had successfully applied for a teaching position at the University of Hong Kong, he was extremely happy and repeatedly said, My son is like me. He has made great achievements and has become talented. This remark only made Auntie give him a fierce glare and say in a tone of dissatisfaction, If Aun were like you, that would be useless. If you don't study hard when you're studying, you'll always know that you're going out on the streets with people, saying it's for the country. What's the point of swimming until now? Upon hearing his mother's words, Hua Chengkai smiled awkwardly. Back then, Hua's father followed his classmates on a parade. On the one hand, everyone did this, and on the other hand, he could openly skip classes. By the end of the anti-Japanese war, the civil war had begun again. In order to avoid some trouble, Hua's father had to bring his family to Hong Kong. He originally wanted to make a name for himself, but his ink was so poor that he lost a lot of money in business. In the end, he could only rely on his family's only remaining wealth to open a bookstore and barely support the whole family. I've been in Hong Kong for about a decade now, and Hua Cheng Kai hasn't made a name for himself. The only thing worth boasting about is giving birth to a smart and beautiful baby. All right, mom. Li Yiping couldn't bear to hear her husband being said by her mother. In law, and couldn't help but comfort her. Hui Yaowen next to him also put a piece of meat into Grandma's bowl and smiled, saying, Grandma eats vegetables. Yes, Granny, the braised pork belly is delicious. Hua Tingting also followed. Okay, good kids, good girls eat. Grandma listened to her grandson's words and started eating with a smile. Eating. Hua's father smiled foolishly when he saw no one paying attention to him, picked up a bowl and started eating. Halfway through the meal, Hua Tingting either stared at Hua Yaowen's glasses and said, Brother, did you buy your new glasses? Take a good look, I've never seen this style before. Hua Yaowen instinctively lifted his golden-rimmed glasses and nodded with a smile, saying, Hmm, the new one I bought, the old one has a slightly lower degree. In fact, after Hui Yaowen was reborn, he found that the original owner was originally highly myopic with a degree of over 500. For some reason, it was miraculous. The glasses he is wearing now have no degree, and the style was also designed by him personally, with the help of the eyewear shop staff tapping copper bit by bit, and then applying a layer of golden dye on the outside. As for why he still needs to wear glasses when he is not nearsighted, one reason is that Hui Yaowen was also nearsighted in his previous life and used to wearing glasses. At the same time, I am about to go to the University of Hong Kong to teach. My former teachers and directors are aware that I am highly myopic, and my family is also aware that if I don't wear it recklessly, it's okay to wear it once or twice. Over time, it's inevitable that some people will be curious and ask me questions. After all, in this era, there is no technology for laser cutting the cornea to restore vision, so to avoid being questioned, wearing glasses with no degree is quite good. Moreover, if Hui Yaowen doesn't wear glasses, he may look a bit inexperienced. He is about to become a teacher, so he naturally needs to dress up more maturely and not give those students a feeling of being too young and incompetent. Of course, these are just one of the reasons, and the most important one is that Hui Yaowen is very suitable for wearing glasses. Wearing glasses, especially the new glasses he specially ordered from an eyewear store based on the styles he will wear in later generations, gives people a feeling of being a scholar when they first see Hui Yaowen. He is gentle and refined. Because the bookstore didn't invite anyone, after finishing lunch, Hua's father hurriedly returned to the bookstore and reopened it. Hua's mother will also go to the bookstore to help. Recently, there have been many students coming to buy textbooks. Sometimes, there are too many people and too many people. Hua's father is too busy alone, so she needs her help to keep an eye on it and not let some students steal one or two books. After Hua Mu also went to the bookstore to help, Grandma tidied up her small room and sewed a new embroidered handkerchief with needles and thread. This was a job given by a tailor shop on the street ahead. Because Auntie read a book when she was young and was specifically taught embroidery by her family, she often embroidered some knitwear and sold it to tailors to earn some money to support her family. 
Xiao Mei Huatingting, on the other hand, ran out to play with her classmates after finishing her meal. It's rare to have a vacation, so she naturally wants to go out and have a good time. As for Hui Yaowen, he used the newspapers and newspaper information collected by Ming Zai to study which newspaper had higher sales and article fees. That's right, the first bucket of gold that Hui Yaowen came up with, and the way to quickly earn money, is to write novels or articles for some newspapers. After all, in his previous life, he was also a professional screenwriter and had written several complete street fighting novels. He thought his writing style was a bit good, but he didn't mention his creativity. However, living back to Hong Kong in 1968, there were already many novels and articles that could be written. As a copywriter, Hui Yaowen was determined. P.S. Qian, Homophonic. 1. End of this chapter. Chapter 5. 005, Scholars Have Always Valued Righteousness Over Profit. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 5005, Scholars Have Always Valued Righteousness Over Profit, the first newspaper published in Hong Kong was the English version of the Hong Kong Government Gazette, which was launched on May 1, 1841. It was specifically designed for circulation within the Hong Kong governor's government and among British citizens. It was not until 16 years later, in 1857, that Hong Kong had a two-sided printed Chinese commercial newspaper called Hong Kong Shipyard Price Paper. Rather than being a newspaper, it was more like a price list specifically designed for merchants to read. As a result, this newspaper had poor sales and was acquired by the famous diplomat and jurist Wu Tingfang in the late Qing Dynasty and Republic of China period the following year. The newspaper was repositioned and a brand new set of Chinese lead letters was rented, which was considered a true newspaper. Later, it developed well and was recognized as the first Chinese newspaper, Zhonghui Xian Bao. Up to now, the newspaper industry in Hong Kong is diverse, including the Hong Kong Daily, which specializes in reporting on Hong Kong's factual news, the Sing Tao Daily, which reports on foreign trends, the Ma Fong Daily, which specializes in reporting on horse classics, and the Ming Pao newspaper, which is famous throughout Hong Kong for its novels. Hui Yaowen looked at the various newspapers and magazines on hand and couldn't help but admire Ming Zai's efficiency in handling affairs. In just one day, he had collected so many newspapers and magazines from different newspapers with different layouts. After screening out newspapers that were not suitable for reporting on news, horse classics, dog classics, etc., there were actually more than 20 newspapers that fell in front of Hui Yaowen. Almost all the remaining newspapers had auxiliary reading magazines specifically designed to provide readers with novels, articles, and miscellaneous articles. Hong Kong Chinese Poetry Daily, Hong Kong Wen Wei Pe, Ming Pao, Sing Tao Daily, Hong Kong Literature Daily, Hong Kong Writers Daily, Literary World, Literary Daily The almost identical newspaper names in a flash left Hui Yao and dazzled. Once again, some poorly selling newspapers provided by Ming Tsai were removed from the list, leaving only five most suitable newspapers in front of them. Ming Pao, Ta Kung Pao, Sing Tao Daily, Hong Kong Wen Wei Pe, and finally Literary World. There are only five newspapers left, with similar sales, and Hui Yaowen also browsed through them one by one. Ming Pao, on the other hand, has been serializing Mr. Jin Yong's latest martial arts novel, Laughing in the Jianghu, since last year, and its sales have consistently ranked among the top three newspapers in Hong Kong. The Hong Kong Wen Wei Pe is committed to serializing multiple martial arts, prose, romance, science fiction and other articles, with contributions from famous authors such as N.I. Fong, Yi Shu, and Lin Yani, and its sales are also good. As for Ta Kung Pao, its sales have fallen significantly compared to the previous two, but there is also Liang Yusheng who is writing his latest masterpiece, The Heroic Wind of the Han Sea. This martial arts article may not have a great influence in later generations, but it is currently more popular among readers than Jin Yong's Laughing and Proud Jianghu. Even Jin Yong praised this novel in the Ming Pao and wrote a scattered poem. Desert in yellow sand, boundless and boundless. Young Xia in white, riding alone. 
heading north to search for his father, it is shrouded in mystery. After several storms, the truth is revealed. Family members leave, couples are separated. The music and books are not heard, and rumors are scattered. The world is far apart, and hearts are intertwined. The mist and clouds eventually disperse, working hand in hand with the world. If this scattered poem were left to this day, some people would surely believe that it was a joke made by Jean Yong about Liang Yusheng, after all, the plot and the experiences of the male protagonist in this book, The Wind of the Sea, are too cliché d and cliché d. However, little did they know that this kind of martial arts novel, which was seen as very cliché d by later generations, is the most novel and passionate martial arts masterpiece in Hong Kong today, mixed with national hatred, love-hate, and complex mysteries. The Sing Tao Daily is similar to the Hong Kong One Way Pa, with dedicated supplements to print these martial arts, essays, and romance. The literary world is quite concentrated, and this newspaper is dedicated to publishing novels and essays. In addition to popular martial arts and romance, it mainly publishes literary works loved by literati. In his early years, San Mao published his research reflections on the monumental work Dream of the Red Chamber, in this newspaper, as well as essays such as Qingqing and Lilies on the Plateau. After reading the content of these five newspapers, Hui Yaowen frowned. If it comes to publishing novels, it is undoubtedly the most suitable for Ming Pao, Hong Kong Wen Wei Pe, and Ta Kung Pao. But the part of the novel published in the supplement of Ta Kung Pao is too small. In addition to Liang Yusheng's still serialized Han Hai Xiong Feng, there are also several martial arts novels written by unknown authors. Hong Kong Wen Wei Pe has so many famous authors who have been famous for a long time. No matter how well Hui Yaowen writes, it may not be able to be published smoothly. Even if it is published, the fee will definitely be very low. After all, he is a new writer who has not been tested by the market. No matter how well he writes, it will be of no use. The final choice is Ming Pao, but in fact, Hui Yaowen is not very keen on it. Firstly, Ming Pao is currently serializing Mr. Jin Yong's Laughing Proud Jianghu. In this way, the front page of the supplement will definitely be Laughing Proud Jianghu, and the novels he writes, regardless of their quality, will definitely be on the lower side. Secondly, Ming Pao has always had the lowest author fees in Hong Kong. Since its establishment by Mr. Jin Yong in 1959, Ming Pao has been developing rapidly and smoothly. Not only did it expand its monthly publication two years ago, but it also created another Ming Pao weekly earlier this year. The most influential literary newspaper nowadays is none other than Ming Pao. With the concept of industry leaders, literati who pursue fame and fortune, as well as street writers, have been honored to publish their own novels and essays in the column of Ming Pao. This also subconsciously forces those who want to publish their articles in newspapers to not pay much attention to the relatively low fees, after all, the concept of, gentlemen speak lightly of profit, has been advocated throughout history. Since ancient times, literati have valued righteousness over profit, this also forces the current, literati and courtesans, who cannot even eat enough to agree to the low and difficult to feed article fees given by Ming Pao. Of course, it is not to say that Ming Pao is a black factory that exploits people. In fact, although the article fees given are very low, they are still enough for a person to live a normal life. Think about it, most people who can publish articles and essays in newspapers are of some age, with families and small families. Once rejected, they will face the embarrassing situation of being short of money. Simply put, Publishing articles, novels, and essays in Ming Pao can quickly gain a lot of fame and quickly open up markets centered around oneself, such as Mr. Jin Yong and Mr. Liang Yusheng. But now, Hui Yaowen doesn't need a name, just a profit. Fame is a natural thing to have, but now Hui Yaowen doesn't even have enough food to eat. At the very least, he needs to change to a new house to live in. At least he is a lifelong traveler how can he always live in a cheap public house? Isn't this falling under the name of a traveler? I think so, 
but now there are only so many newspapers to choose from. Excluding those with poor sales, there are only the five newspapers in front of me. Hui Yaowen scratched the back of his head, thinking it was really difficult for him to choose between Ming Pao or Ta Kung Pao. He wanted to write some articles first to improve his reputation, and then ask the other party to pay additional fees later. Just as he was pondering which one to choose, Hui Yaowen's gaze was suddenly drawn to the scattered newspapers. He took out the i.dot catching newspaper and glanced at the title of the newspaper, which was the Hong Kong Business Daily. Under the special recruitment advertisement supplement, I saw a recruitment advertisement that attracted Hui Yaowen. The newly established newspaper is looking for professionals in editing, reviewing, typesetting, and other fields. Additionally, we are inviting literary and literary writers to submit their articles at a high cost. The address is 372, Guizhou Street, Kowloon, Hong Kong. The contact person is Mr. Ma, and the contact phone number is. P.S. The contract has already been mailed, and the signing status will be changed in a few days. If you don't have any investment, you can quickly invest and make a steady profit without losing. Also, Please ask for recommended tickets and collectibles. Newcomers and new books need encouragement the most. Thank you very much. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 006 Oriental Newspaper Industry You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6006 Oriental Newspaper Industry 372 Guizhou Street, Kowloon Office of the Editor-in-Chief of Oriental Newspaper. This office is very large, over 500 feet long. It not only has a desk for office work, but also a coffee table rest area that is divided into about 200 feet for guests. The indoor air conditioning, tea cabinets, bookcases, and other items are fully equipped, and everything is in place. A man in his thirties, lying on the sofa with a cigarette in his mouth and looking a bit messy, was eating his cigarette while feeling displeased and said, Big brother, there's nothing good about newspapers. It's not as fast as selling fans for money, and even if it's to cover up, we might as well switch to selling fresh fruits. Isn't that the lame guy who sells fresh fruits on a street in the Yaoma tea fruit stall? The man sitting in the boss's chair, known as Big Brother, gave him a fierce glare and said with a resentful expression, You weakling knows nothing. Cold Buting was scolded and the smoking man's face was displeased. He said unhappily, Big brother, if you have something to say, speak up. Why are you scolding me? Speak well, speak well, will you listen? Do you think I run a newspaper just to cover up? Do I, Marulong, need to cover up? Even if I sell my fans at the entrance of the governor's office, I think they are brave enough to catch me. Marulong's originally gentle face was now unusually fierce, and his arrogant aura startled even Maruhu, who was eating a cigarette. The cigarette in his hand, which was already not very tight, slid down as he watched the cigarette end glowing red on the ground. He quickly picked it up and put it into the ashtray on the coffee table to extinguish it. Although Maruhu is usually fearless, he is still quite timid in front of his elder brother Marulong. Seeing his elder brother get angry now, he also asked cautiously, What do you mean by running a newspaper, big brother? Upon hearing this, Marulong changed his previous arrogance and gradually became more serious. He said with fear, The side business is not as good as the main business. Over time, things will happen sooner or later. Recently, I heard that Lelo is preparing to resign and retire, and I think this matter is a bit strange. It seems that the anti-corruption campaign that has been mentioned in the newspaper has already affected him. Our Ma family should also find a more secure future and make plans in advance. Ray Lo is retiring. Maruhu's face froze for a moment, then exclaimed in shock, Big brother, is it because of last year's incident that the British are going to do Ray Lo? Will this affect us? What are you afraid of? Marulong glanced at his still unstable younger brother and said unhappily, who is talking about the British going to do Raylo. What I mean is, we need to leave a way out. Although running a newspaper doesn't cost much money, 
we can control public opinion. From now on, if someone dares to insinuate in the newspaper, I also have a pen to speak for me. Marohu didn't catch the main point of his brother's words at all. Instead, he yelled angrily, which newspaper is talking about you? I led someone to burn down his newspaper, and from now on, I'll talk about you in the newspaper. Looking at his younger brother's street-thumping behavior, Marulong covered his forehead for a moment and didn't know how to say it properly. Marohu, who made bold remarks, saw his elder brother covering his forehead and thought he had a headache. Subconsciously, he asked with concern, What's wrong with you, elder brother? If you have nothing to do, go home and accompany your mother. Don't cause trouble with me. But. Before Marohu could even speak, he heard someone knocking on the door outside. Marulong gave him a glance, and then Marohu reluctantly stood up to open the door. While opening the door, he said displeased, Oh my God. The employee who called at the door, seeing Marohu's ferocious expression, swallowed his saliva and carefully looked at Ma Rulong sitting inside, saying, Ma. Boss Ma, someone outside said to submit a manuscript. Submission. Ma Rulong was momentarily taken aback, and then remembered that when he was recruiting and advertising in the newspaper, he seemed to have mentioned inviting literary writers and writers to submit at a high cost, but he didn't expect someone to submit so soon. In the gaze of Ma Rohu, who was about to eat people, the employee trembled and said, Boss Ma, do you want to see him? Hm let the person who submitted the article come in. Although Ma Rulong ran the newspaper business for the sake of his family's retreat, since he did it, he must do it well, otherwise he would lose face with Ma Rulong. And having an influential newspaper is a very important thing for him. At present, the newspaper industry is lacking in everything. Since someone has come to submit articles, as long as the articles are not too bad, it can be accepted by Ma Rulong. Yes, the employee heard the reply and quickly left. Big Brother, do you really want to run a newspaper? Ma Rohu saw that Big Brother's face was serious and he was about to meet the person who submitted the article. It was only then that he realized that Big Brother Ma Rulong really wanted to run a newspaper. I'm too lazy to tell you, get lost. Marulong was extremely angry and laughed back, picked up a notebook on the table and threw it over. I didn't hit the horse like a tiger, but it also made him understand that my elder brother was angry, so he had to sneer and say, okay, I'll go home first. Marohu turned around and opened the door. As soon as he walked out, he saw a young man dressed in refined attire, wearing golden rimmed glasses and a white shirt, who immediately knew he was a scholar walking over. Marohu looked at the person coming and thought to himself that he should be the one who was going to submit the article. He didn't look at the other person in the eye and just brushed past them. But the young man instinctively raised his glasses after seeing Marohu, without stopping, and walked straight behind the employees towards the office. For a moment, the wooden door of the office was knocked on, making a thumping sound. The horse inside the house said, Come in. The young man knocking on the door outside, carrying an old briefcase, smiled at the employee leading him over, then opened the door and walked in. People often say that the first sight of meeting people is very important. However, when Marulong saw the unique literati temperament and very handsome appearance of the young people in front of him, he instinctively developed a liking and reached out his hand, saying, Hello, I am Marulong, the editor-in-chief of Oriental Newspaper. Hello Editor-in-Chief Ma, my name is Hui Yaowen. This morning, I saw your newspaper's recruitment content in the Hong Kong Business Daily, which mentioned inviting writers to submit their articles. So, I came over to submit my article in person. Hui Yaowen maintained his usual smile and walked up to Ma Rulong, shaking hands and smiling calmly. Ma Rulong grinned and said, Uh, Hui Sheng is really talkative. I really like young people like you who are confident. Regardless of whether your article has been published in our newspaper industry, with your courage and determination alone, I will definitely accept it. Until now, the newspaper has not even finalized the most important editor-in-chief. Who knows when the official launch and distribution will take place. Marulong is just a temporary substitute. 
he doesn't understand the matter of reading the manuscript, but currently only Hui Yaowen has come to submit it. The first person should pay a little attention to both emotions and reason. In addition, Hui Yaowen's appearance is very good, giving the overall impression of being gentle and elegant. At first glance, it is clear that he is someone with ink in his stomach, so Ma Rulong is willing to sell well. If this person's article is well written, it means that he has a keen eye and knows people like a dragon, if the article is written mediocrely, it also indicates that he is eager for talent like a dragon, and no matter what, he is always making a steady profit without losing. Editor-in-Chief Ma laughed. Hui Yaowen doesn't know how to read the mind and is not clear about what Ma Rulong is thinking, but the scenes and words spoken by the other party make people feel happy. I thought to myself, no wonder Ma Rulong has gone from being an unpopular, white powder horse, engaged in grey business to becoming the top-selling newspaper and media tycoon in Hong Kong, for 29 consecutive years. Hui Yaowen didn't say much either. He opened his briefcase and handed the tens of thousands of words of novel he had written earlier to Ma Rulong with both hands. Ma Rulong instinctively took over the manuscript, intending to ask the other party to leave a phone number first. When he recruited an editor-in-chief and asked the new editor to review the article, he noticed the somewhat strange title of the book, Ghost Blows the Lamp. Tomb Robbing Notes Ghost Blows Out the Lamp Tomb Robbing Notes when Ma Rulong saw ghosts blowing lights, he thought it was a horror ghost novel. This genre is still popular in Hong Kong, but there are few horror stories about ghosts published in newspapers. Most of them are published in literary weekly magazines or some small newspapers, as these ghost stories are very short and not suitable for serialization in newspapers. If it were just the three words, ghost blows out the lamp, Ma Rulong wouldn't have been stunned. The subtitle, Tomb Robbing Notes, at the end, caught his attention. He glanced at the densely packed words on the paper and at first glance, he thought the pen script was good, but he didn't have the time to look at so many words, so he directly asked, what does tomb robbing notes mean? It tells the story of a tomb raiding family lost in the old era. Are there any aristocratic families involved in tomb raiding? Ma Rulong frowned. He can understand the term tomb robbing, but to put it bluntly, it means digging people's ancestral graves. This is undoubtedly a taboo in places in Hong Kong where feng shui is a strong belief. However, it's not a big deal. The most important thing is that Ma Rulong has never heard of tomb raiders or aristocratic families. Is it true that generations of descendants of these families have been tomb raiders who specialize in digging people's ancestral graves? Hui Yaowen saw Ma Rulong's interested expression on his face, so he decided to talk to the other party. The tens of thousands of words manuscript just handed over by Hui Yaowen is not very attractive when read because it is a prelude to the previous text. If the other party refuses to reject it due to fear of not being knowledgeable enough, it would be too embarrassing. Hui Yaowen moistened his throat and slowly summarized the theme of tomb raiding a novel that emerged in later generations, saying, the tomb raiding I write about is not the kind of tomb raider that people narrowly believe. It is a profession that has been passed down from ancient times, such as kneading clay figurines, singing opera, playing monkeys, repairing feet, and shaving hair. Tomb raiding, a special profession, can be divided into four major schools, namely gold mining, unloading mountains, hair hillocks, and moving mountains. P.S. Seeking recommended tickets, collecting books, adding book lists, all kinds of requests, invincible 360 degree rolling back and forth. End of this chapter. 7. Chapter 7007, Attractive. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 7007, Attractive After Being Reborn, Hui Yaowen had already made up his mind to earn money by writing novels or some articles. Speaking of which, besides martial arts, the novels of this era are mostly about romance written by science fiction and Xiong Yao, as well as traditional realistic novels with a strong literary influence. There are not many classifications of novels, so Hui Yaowen has thought a lot about this type of novel theme that has a large market gap. In addition to traditional martial arts, science fiction, 
romance, he is also considered immortality, fantasy, and so on. But in the end, Hui Yaowen did not choose these relatively novel themes. There are two main considerations, one reason is that the writing style of today's famous novelists still leans towards traditional realism, which cannot be said to be very good, but at least in terms of vocabulary and fluency, they far surpass most future martial arts writers. Secondly, it is that Hui Yaowen has never written about these themes before. It seems that he has read a bit and can definitely write about them, and the novels he writes can definitely attract the attention of readers today. However, both immortal and fantasy schools have traces in the history of novels. For example, in the realm of immortality and chivalry, there is, The Legend of Swordsman in Shushan, written by the owner of Huanzhou Tower during the Republic of China period, Xian Huanlu also had, Fengxian Yeni, written by Su Zhonglin in the Ming Dynasty. Hui Yaowen believes that if he wants to establish his fame through a novel, it is definitely possible to write about it, and it can quickly open up his own fame. However, he does not want to pick up the wisdom of others. Well, although tomb raiding is also a case of picking up wisdom, in 1968 in Hong Kong, no one proposed or wrote novels about such tomb raids. Strictly speaking, if Hui Yaowen had written it now, he would be the first ancestor of tomb raiding. He he, after saying so much, I didn't catch the key point that Hui Yaowen didn't write about immortal fantasy. The main reason why Hui Yaowen doesn't write about immortality or fantasy is that his writing has a fatal weakness, as his depiction of combat scenes is very weak. Hui Yaowen's writing style tends to focus on character portrayal and storytelling. He can delicately and vividly depict a character that can leave a deep impression on people, as well as write a story plot that leaves a lasting impression and a lingering aftertaste. The description of fighting scenes is too weak. This is also one of the reasons why several fantasy novels written by Hui Yaowen in his previous life were so popular in the streets. He was too bad at depicting those wild and tumultuous battle scenes. People have self-awareness, and Hui Yaowen has this self-awareness. Instead of relying on creativity to write books, it's better to avoid what you're not good at and write content that you're good at, focusing on portraying character images and storylines. Only good character images and storylines can leave people with endless aftertaste. After reading it once, they still want to read it again for the second or third time. This is a good novel, a good story. Ghost Blows Out the Lamp Notes on Tomb Robbery Hui Yaowen not only referred to recognized genres of tomb raiding in later generations and some unique tomb raiding tools, but basically all of the content was original, and he couldn't remember it even if he wanted to copy it, and the times didn't match. Most of the tomb raiding novels in later generations were written about tomb raiding stories from the 1980s, but now it is Hong Kong in 1968. If you want to write it, it must be in line with the characteristics of this era. Moreover, when writing this tomb raiding novel, Hui Yaowen specifically went to the library of the University of Hong Kong and the public library of the Hong Kong City Hall to borrow some miscellaneous articles and biographies of the Republic of China, in order to deepen the authenticity of this book. So when Hui Yaowen sketched out his tomb robbery story to Ma Rulong, Ma Rulong's eyes lit up. Although he didn't know how to distinguish the good from the bad of an article, he wasn't illiterate either. In his spare time, he also read martial arts novels written by Jin Yong and others, and occasionally fantasized about becoming an ancient hero. The most basic ability to distinguish whether an article is good or not, Ma Rulong definitely has it. Therefore, when he heard Hui Yaowen's story about the ancient tomb raiding school, the fascinating tomb raiding plot, and the various strange tomb raiding tools used to dig up the tombs of nobles and grandchildren that he had never seen or heard of before, it made him itch. At the end, Ma Rulong couldn't help asking, what is Zongzi? Hui Yaowen replied. There are many kinds of Zongzi, but they can be collectively called zombies. Can you explain it in more detail? Ma Rulong frowned, still unable to understand what a zombie was. Hui Yaowen was aware that there were no zombie films by Lin Zhenying yet, so he intended to briefly explain the meaning of zombies. However, on second thought, 
he revealed the advertising slogan that often pops up in later generations, zombies are born from the resentment and misfortune of heaven and earth, never aging or dying, and are abandoned by the three realms of heaven, earth, and human beings outside the six realms of sentient beings. Just hearing the three words of immortality, immortality, and immortality makes Marulong feel that this zombie must be a ruthless character, not to mention what has been excluded from the six realms of sentient beings by the three realms of heaven, earth, and humanity. In this way, Marulong was itching when he thought that Hui Yaowen had just mentioned that the hero Hui Xiong had met a big Zongzi when he was robbing the tomb, but he didn't hear anything about it. Again, he couldn't help asking, Hua Sheng, how can Hui Xiong solve the problem after he meets the big Zongzi? I haven't figured it out yet. I'm really sorry, Editor Ma. I don't have much leisure time on weekdays, Hui Yaowen shook his head, pretending to be regretful. In fact, it's okay to have Hui Yaowen tell the story of tomb raids in one breath. There are many tricks to follow, and casually speaking can attract the attention and ears of people who have not read such articles in this era. But it's pointless to talk so much now. Let's first discuss the issue of manuscript fees, and coupled with the rise of Hui Yaowen watching Ma Rulong listen, he deliberately left a suspense for the other party. Ma Rulong did not doubt him. After all, writing articles takes time, so he couldn't help sighing. What a pity. I really want to know how Hua Ingxiong met that big Zongzi. Oh, how can zombies solve it? It's not surprising that Ma Rulong is behaving in such a way, after all, there are too few entertainment options in this era. Although there are cinemas, TV dramas, or nightclubs, they are all boring things for Ma Rulong. Suddenly hearing this fascinating, yet mixed with various suspense and novel tomb raiding stories, I was curious and aroused an infinite desire to follow up. Hui Yaowen smiled and said, if Editor Ma wants to see it as soon as possible, I will definitely write it out as soon as I go back. That's great, Ma Rulong said with a smile on his face. Such a great story, such a fascinating tomb raiding novel, even I have been attracted. I believe that as long as it is published in newspapers, it will definitely attract the attention of a large number of readers. What does Chief Editor Ma mean? Ma Rulong's face darkened and he pondered for a few seconds before saying, Well, Hua Sheng, if it's convenient, leave a phone number. Tomorrow, I'll personally notify you. That's no problem. Hui Yaowen knew that at the moment, Oriental Newspaper was newly founded, and Ma Rulong was not a knowledgeable person, so he definitely needed to find a professional. I have great confidence in Hua Xing's ghost. Ghost blows out the lamp and robs tomb notes. Don't worry, our newspaper will definitely accept this manuscript. Perhaps it was because he was afraid that Hui Yaowen would join his family again, Ma Rulong said directly. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 008 Empress Flower You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8008 Empress Flower When Hui Yaowen came out of Oriental Newspaper, it was already over four o'clock in the afternoon, and the scorching sun had gradually dissipated. The sunset was setting in the west, and it was dusk at its peak. In 1968, Hong Kong was far from as prosperous, clean, and towering as it was in later times. On the contrary, the streets are filled with dirt, chaos, and even worse, especially with cigarette butts, debris, and broken leaves on both sides of the road. However, if we abandon these things and don't look at them, the streets of Hong Kong at this time have a different charm. Traditional Chinese advertising signs are densely hung above shops, and pedestrians rush by on the street. A few children squat on the street, looking at the toy books in their hands, giving them a feeling of being in Hong Kong movies from the 1980s. As he walked, Hui Yaowen was thinking about writing articles for Oriental Newspaper. At present, Oriental Newspaper is only a startup and its influence is definitely not as strong as well.known newspapers such as Ming Pao and Takang Pao. However, Hui Yaowen understands that in the future, Oriental newspaper will not only surpass Ming Pao and Takang Pao in sales, but also become the first newspaper in Hong Kong to achieve the highest sales for 29 consecutive years. 
these are the later achievements of Oriental newspaper. Although Hui Yao knows them, he will not set his sights on the long term. He is now submitting to Marulo, not valuing the future of Oriental newspaper, but valuing the lack of things that can increase newspaper sales. Simply put, Hui Yao Wen is considering the issue of manuscript fees. Nowadays, in the newspaper industry in Hong Kong, unless it only publishes specialized newspapers such as News, Horse Classics, and Dog Classics, it basically invites some literati and famous writers to write articles for the newspaper, from novels to essays, with unlimited themes. As long as the content of the novel or article can attract readers and ordinary people to buy newspapers, that's enough. However, this is not entirely absolute. Newspapers are not books, their role is more to provide people with current affairs information and key news points. Why was Ming Pao able to surpass newspapers such as Takung Pao and Hong Kong Wen Wei Pao, which have been established for over 20 years, and become the top three newspapers that have long dominated the sales of the entire Hong Kong newspaper industry in less than nine years? Apart from the celebrity column in the supplement, there is more about the positioning of Ming Pao itself. In 1959, Jin Yong collaborated with his friend Shen Baoxin to jointly establish Ming Pao. In the early days of its establishment, Shen Baoxin was in charge of business, while Jin Yong was responsible for editorial affairs. At that time, a daily newspaper with a double opening, also known as a folded newspaper, was published on four sides. At the beginning, Benefiting from Mr. Jean Yong's personal reputation as a martial arts enthusiast and his writing of martial arts novels, he was able to sell one or two thousand copies per day, barely maintaining the balance of income and expenditure for the newspaper. But as the section about the little dragon girl in The Legend of the Condor Heroes was written, it could be said that it exploded among the readership. Suddenly, the newspaper's sales dropped from one or two thousand to several hundred, and in the end, it fell to a point where no one ordered it. That year, Ming Pao suffered severe losses. From now on, it means the author is poisoning the book. Still highly toxic. What kind of poison will kill you immediately? It was not until later that this part of the plot passed, and with the climax of The Legend of the Condor Heroes, that this toxic point was finally slightly alleviated. Coupled with Shen Baoxin's management methods, Ming Pao's advertising business steadily increased, which turned losses into profits. It is precisely because of this incident that Jin Yong saw that newspapers cannot rely solely on articles to attract readers, so he changed the positioning and direction of Ming Pao, no longer relying solely on articles and novels written by famous writers to attract readers, but moving towards an elite newspaper with independent speech and impartial. So in 1962, when a large number of people from the mainland illegally crossed into Hong Kong and were intercepted by the Hong Kong Royal Police at Wutong Mountain in Sheng Shui during the Refugee Tide, Ming Pao ignored this sensitive topic and took the lead in shouting in the newspaper, winning the support of most scholars and intellectuals at that time. As a result, Ming Pao changed its newspaper format from a small citizen newspaper that focused on martial arts novels, sensational news, and horse scriptures to an authoritative and independent intellectual newspaper. Like Ming Pao, Oriental Newspaper had poor profits in the early stages of its establishment and could not sell a few newspapers. But as Ma Rulong changed the positioning of the newspaper, hired famous writers to write dog classics, and leveraged his influence in the underworld, he found ways to obtain some horse classics and tips that other horse classics newspapers did not know, which finally established a foothold in Hong Kong, where the newspaper industry is flourishing. Tips, imported words, in English, referring to gossip, however, no matter how the positioning and style of the newspaper are changed, the most basic novels and articles are essential content, especially an attractive novel. Not only can it drive newspaper sales, but it can also more or less cultivate loyal readers and make long-term purchases of this newspaper. Hui Yaowen's submission to Oriental Newspaper was because he had just started publication and had not even printed his first newspaper. He inevitably needed some attractive novels and articles to quickly open up the market, just like the Ming Pao in the past. The book Ghost Blows Out the Lamp 
Tomb Robbing Notes combines the essence of countless tomb raiding novels in later generations. Hui Yaowen believes that once published in newspapers, it can definitely attract the attention of the general public more than martial arts novels that have almost reached the bottleneck at present. The book features various ghosts and monsters, folk rumors, mountain and wilderness anecdotes, as well as some authentic archaeological processes and tomb raiding techniques that can withstand scrutiny. This not only makes it lively for ordinary readers and citizens, but also attracts the attention of historical and archaeological enthusiasts. While thinking, Hui Yaowen walked and was about to leave Guizhou Street when he arrived at the bus stop. It was then that he was shocked to think that teacher Zhang's family seemed to live on Guizhou Street. I glanced at my watch and realized it was 4.15 p.m. I was thinking of visiting teacher Zhang at this time, so that I wouldn't be dragged to stay for dinner. With this in mind, Hui Yaowen happened to see a fruit vendor across the street, and took a step forward. The fruit vendor sitting on the ground, seeing someone walking over, quickly got up from the ground, patted the dust on his buttocks, and said enthusiastically, Sir, what can I buy? Perhaps it was because of Hui Yaowen's scholarly attire and refined demeanor that even the vendors unconsciously used the term, Sir. Let's have a watermelon, Hui Yaowen looked at the vendor's cart. Apart from watermelons, there were also several common summer fruits such as pineapples and grapes. After thinking for a moment, he said, another pound of grapes. Okay. The vendor quickly patted the first five or six large watermelons and tried to find the heaviest one as much as possible. After weighing them on a long scale, he said, one pound is five cents, a total of fourteen pounds. Falling flowers cover the sky with moonlight, borrow a cup and recommend it to the Phoenix Terrace, Empress flowers with tears and fragrance, may I die and thank my parents, to secretly look, to secretly look, he is filled with tears and dark sadness. Following the route in his memory, Hui Yaowen carried a large watermelon and a pound of grapes he had bought. As soon as he arrived at the floor where teacher Zhang lived, he saw him lying comfortably on a rocking chair by the hallway. With a sunflower fan in his left hand and a small ceramic teapot in his right hand, he listened to the Cantonese opera classic Empress and Daughter Flower, created by Tang Disheng in the 1950s played on an old dot-fashioned radio and hummed along. P.S. Has anyone read this book? Also, Empress Flower, sounds really good, I recommend one or two. End of this chapter Chapter 9 009 Teacher Zhang you are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio. This translator is experiencing an error, please try another translator. 10, Chapter 10010, New Mandarin Duck and Butterfly Dream. You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio. Chapter 10010, New Mandarin Duck and Butterfly Dream. By the time Hui Yaowen picked up his watermelon and took the bus back home, it was already over 6 o'clock in the evening. However, the summer days were relatively long, and the sky was still dim and yellow. Brother, you bought watermelon. Xiao Mei Hua Tingting saw Hui Yaowen carrying a large watermelon in his hand when she came home. She happily ran over to take the watermelon from his hand, looked at the green skin, and thought about the cool and delicious flesh inside. Subconsciously, she licked her lips, revealing her greedy nature. Hua's mother heard the commotion outside and walked out of the bedroom. When she saw her son coming back and buying watermelons, she couldn't help but complain, why did you buy watermelons? They cost a lot of money, right? I heard that fruits are very expensive now. When I was buying groceries in the market a few days ago, a pound of watermelons cost five cents. Almost. Hui Yaowen is well aware of his mother's frugal personality. There are not many opportunities to eat fruits at home on a daily basis, and it is not that he is too poor to afford it. Instead, Hua's mother has been thinking of saving money bit by bit to buy a house for her son to get married. After all, Hua Yaowen is now 21 years old. Ten years ago, a man his age could even carry a soy sauce bottle to a restaurant to make soy sauce as a child. Office Small grocery store the prices in Hong Kong are really getting more and more expensive, 
Wamu walked up to her younger sister Hua Tingting, picked up the watermelon, and said, I'll go put it in the water tank and ice it for tomorrow. Let's eat now, Mom. Hua Tingting greedily tugged at Hua's arm and coquettishly said, Damn girl, you're not afraid of diarrhea when you eat watermelon at night. Hua Mu nodded at Hua Tingting's forehead in anger and said, I don't know who had to eat popsicles at night last time. I don't know how many times I got up and ran back and forth to the bathroom at night. Shi Mei's digestive system is not good, and once she eats too much cold food at night, it is easy to have stomach problems. This is the case all year round, so Hua Mu strictly controls her meals on a daily basis. Okay, Hua Tingting reluctantly released her hand. She hadn't eaten watermelon for a long time. The last time was when Ah Gu graduated. It was hot at that time, and Hua's father bought watermelon from outside and brought it back. Have An eaten yet? I haven't eaten yet. Mom will help you heat up your meal. Okay, Mom, I'm already hungry. Hua Yaowen replied to Hua Mu and turned his head to see Shi Mei staring greedily at the disappearing watermelon. He chuckled and said, eat the same tomorrow. Don't let me have diarrhea and trouble sleeping all night. Hui Yaowen is currently sleeping on the floor in the living room. In summer, he can sleep directly by laying a bamboo mat. Therefore, if someone wakes up at night and goes to the bathroom, it will disturb him. At first, he was a bit noisy, but later he gradually got used to it. Humph. Hua Tingting snorted arrogantly, not wanting to argue with Hua Yaowen more about this matter. Seeing the proud and coquettish appearance of his younger sister, Hua Yaowen smiled silently. In his previous life, he was an only child and had no siblings. Now, he has a younger sister who likes to act coquettishly and occasionally becomes arrogant, which is quite interesting. I thought Hua Tingting would be as usual, proud and coquettish for a while, pretending not to pay attention to you, and then seeing that she didn't pay attention to her, she leaned in and completely lost her previous proud and coquettish demeanor. But Hui Yaowen didn't expect that in just a few seconds, Xiao Mei turned her head and stared at her curiously, asking, Brother, I heard you're planning to write an article and submit it. What means I told you? Hui Yaowen turned around and glanced at his younger sister. Yeah, but he told me not to tell you it was him who said it. Hee <laughs> hee. Hui Yaowen burst out laughing. Apart from Mingzi, who knew about his novel submission, almost no one knew about it. Mingzi asked his younger sister not to tell him it was him. Isn't this unnecessary? What novel are you writing, brother? Is it martial arts or science fiction, or prose and romance like those of Cheong Yao and Yi Xu? asked the younger sister Hui Yaowen pondered for a moment and said, mm, a new genre of novels. What is it? Tomb robbing. Tomb robbing. Upon hearing this word, Hua Tingting's mind immediately recalled the tomb. She, who had always been afraid of ghosts and monsters, couldn't help but shudder and timidly said, Brother, how could you write such a ghost story? Hua Yaowen didn't want to explain to his younger sister that tomb raiding is not a ghost story, but he thought of the ghosts and monsters inside. Considering that she was afraid of these things, he didn't say anything. Instead, he said, why are you so curious? The exam is coming soon, so don't think about reading novels all day. No, ah go. Hua Tingting got up in a hurry and ran to a small cabinet next to the fan. She took out a magazine from the book stored inside and walked back quickly to hand it to Hua Yaowen, saying, Ah go, recently there was a literature competition held by Literary World. I think if you want to write a novel article, you can give it a try. The first place not only has a prize of 5,000 mosquito money, but also can win the publication of Literary World. Essay Competition Hui Yaowen took over the weekly magazine Literary World and opened the literary competition mentioned by Shi Mei. On the top of the page, he saw a black and capital headline that read. New Mandarin Duck and Butterfly Dream. Thirty-six Mandarin ducks share the same destiny as birds, 
and a pair of butterflies are pitiful insects. The school of mandarin ducks and butterflies is a new literary genre with milestone effect in the new generation of literature after the Xinhai Revolution. Its depiction of the various sorrows and separations between talented and beautiful people has been widely loved and welcomed by the public since its emergence. Previously, there were Mr. Zhang Henshui's Spring and Ming Annals and Golden Powder Aristocratic Family, which promoted the integration of new literature and popular literature. Later, there were Mr. Bao Tianxiao's Shanghai Spring and Autumn and Mirage on the Sea, as well as the literary flourishing era of the Mandarin Duck and Butterfly School jointly created by many predecessors. To this day, through the efforts of many new generation literary writers such as Zhang Ailing, Cheong Yao, and Yi Xu. The Mandarin Duck and Butterfly School, born in the era of the Republic of China, gradually shed the shell of the old era and formed a new romantic vernacular novel set in modern cities, which can be easily understood by more readers. At this point, the school of Mandarin Ducks and Butterflies embarked on a new journey, forming a new generation of female writers led by Zhang Ailing, Cheong Yao, Yi Xu, and others. Under the strong invitation of this week's magazine, we have won the support of many famous figures such as Ms. Zhang Ailing, Ms. Cheong Yao, and Ms. Yi Xu. Therefore, we are organizing a literary essay competition called New Mandarin Duck and Butterfly Dream. Ms. Zhang Ailing, Ms. Cheong Yao, Ms. Yi Xu, and other renowned judges have jointly selected the top 10 contestants for the competition. Each writer or literary enthusiast can submit a letter to the competition. Registration Submission Address 412, Kuang Tong Street, Nathan Road, Hong Kong Competition Reward First Place After reading the essay, Hui Yao Wen touched his nose and looked at his younger sister, saying, and then. Then. Hua Tingting blinked twice with watery eyes and said curiously, Brother, don't you want to submit? You know, the first place earns 5,000 yuan, there is also a publishing opportunity, and there are comments from famous judges such as Cheong Yao and Yi Xu. Not interested. Hui Yao Wen closed the magazine and casually threw it onto the table, looking at his younger sister and saying, most romance novels are decadent. Reading too much not only makes it easy for intelligence to decline, but also makes it particularly easy to immerse oneself in the fantasy world he has constructed. He always thinks about being a domineering CEO, a soft and cute man. Ah. Uh. Hua Tingting understood the previous words, but what does the final domineering CEO, soft and cute warm man mean? All right, anyway, I don't know how to write romance novels. Hui Yao Wen then remembered that the era of domineering CEOs had not yet emerged. Hua Tingting blinked her eyes and deliberately seduced, Brother, please consider carefully. 5,000 mosquito coins. There is also a chance for publication. It is said that you can also personally see Yi Xu and Cheong Yao. Upon hearing that Xiaomei kept mentioning Cheong Yao and Yi Xu, Hui Yao Wen couldn't help but guess what Xiaomei was thinking. He smiled helplessly and said, even if I submit my article, I may not be able to win first place, and it doesn't say I can meet with Yi Xu and Cheong Yao. So, let's stop the matter of signing. Don't you like reading romance books like this? If not, you can try writing them. Me, Hua Tingting vented, my academic class is the worst. If I could write it, what would I expect from you? At this moment, Hua Mu, who was having a hot meal outside, shouted, On, what are you talking to my younger sister about? Come out and have a meal. Okay. Hui Yao Wen stood up and reached out to rub his slender sister's long hair, grinning. How do you know if you don't try? Maybe our family has a talented woman. Isn't she also trying to write some essays and publish them when she was in high school? Look at her current achievements. She is a well-known literary female writer in Hong Kong. If you also become a well-known female writer, Ah Gu would say how prestigious it would be. After speaking, Hui Yao Wen went out directly to prepare a meal. Leaving Hua Tingting with her mouth curled, she looked at the magazine Literary World on the table, first lamenting for a while, then perhaps thinking of Hui Yao Wen's words. 
She gritted her teeth and looked fierce, as if she had made some decision. End of this chapter